A loss in the big game can often mark the beginning of the end for a lot of big names out there. Losing in the big game is one of the greatest forms of heartbreak that any athlete can endure. So today, here are 10 NFL superstars that fell off and weren't the same after they lost the Super Bowl. And hey, a big shout out to Porter Nelson 8302 for suggesting a very similar idea. We decided to tweak it a little bit, but the video does not happen without ya. Thanks man. Matt Ryan Ryan won MVP honors in 2016 after completing 69.9% of pass attempts for 4,944 yards and 38 touchdowns against only 7 interceptions. The Ryan-led Atlanta Falcons finished with the league's number one offense, averaging 33.8 points per game. But we all know how that dream MVP season ended. A gut-wrenching defeat to the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 51. Quite frankly, nobody on the Falcons was really the same after that devastating defeat. I mean, how can you possibly move on from blowing a 25 point second half lead in the big game. Seriously, you're gonna need some heavy therapy to get over that. After the Falcons Super Bowl meltdown, consider this, Ryan would lead the club to one more playoff appearance, culminating in a loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC Divisional Round. Ryan was never a pro bowler after the Super Bowl 51 meltdown, and he hit 30 TD passes in a season only one more time. The Falcons finished with a losing record in each of his final four years at the organization, and a subsequent trade to the Indianapolis Colts in 2020 only led to the worst season of Ryan's career. What else can we say? The New England Patriots broke Ryan and the Falcons. Cam Newton Superman turned in one of the best individual seasons ever for a quarterback in 2015. Newton threw for 3,837 yards and 35 touchdowns to go along with 636 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. He was named MVP after leading Carolina to a franchise best 15-1 record. But after walking through the competition in the regular season, Newton and the high-powered Carolina offense got manhandled by the Von Miller-led Denver Broncos defense in Super Bowl 50. In that game, Newton was sacked twice, lost two fumbles, and threw a pick as the Broncos went on to win 24-10. Cam Newton decides not to dive in there and yeah, take he backed away from it. it. He jumped away instead of jumping into the pile. And with that, Superman was no more. Newton never came close to reaching those MVP-like numbers again, nor did he win another playoff game after Super Bowl 50. His Panthers qualified for the postseason in 2017, but were eliminated by the New Orleans Saints in the wildcard round. Newton missed all but two games in 2019 due to injury. He tried reviving his career with the Patriots in 2020, but even Bill Belichick couldn't fix him. Newton briefly returned to Carolina in 2021 amid injuries to the QB position, but he too proved to be a shell of his former self. Newton went unsigned for the 2022 season, a stern reminder that Super Bowl 50 marked the beginning of the end for Superman. Sean Alexander In 2005, Alexander compiled what was the greatest all-around season for a running back in NFL history at the time. The Seattle Seahawks star rushed for a league-best 1,880 yards and a then-single-season record 27 touchdowns. Alexander also set the record for most total touchdowns in the season with 28. The Seahawks finished as the top team in the NFC and cruised to a Super Bowl 40 appearance where they met the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Seahawks lost a yawn fester of a game 21 to 10, all thanks largely to the worst single game officiating performance in NFL history. We knew it was going to be tough going against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I didn't know we were going to have to play the guys in the striped shirts as well. It was a heartbreaking loss for the Hawks to begin with, but little did the football world know that this would also be the last of prime Sean Alexander too. Injuries ended up limiting Alexander to 10 games in 2006, and he finished with 896 rushing yards and 7 TDs. He missed 3 games in the 2007 season, and following an unproductive campaign, was subsequently released by the Seahawks in the ensuing offseason. Alexander tried bouncing back by signing with Washington in 2008, where he saw just 11 carries for 24 yards and 4 game appearances, and thus Alexander would be out of the league following the 2008 season. Josh Norman 
We previously detailed Cam Newton in the 2015 Panthers. Most of the credit went to that Carolina offense. Norman was named a Pro Bowler and First Team All-Pro after recording two interceptions, 18 pass defenses, and three forced fumbles. Norman had another superb outing in the postseason for the Panthers, but his efforts weren't enough in the Super Bowl 50 loss to Denver. After placing the 2016 franchise tag on Norman, the Panthers rescinded it in an all-time mind-boggling move. Norman then signed a five-year deal with Washington worth $75 million. He never came close to playing at the same Pro Bowl level again and was benched on several occasions during his tenure in DC. Norman later had brief stints with the Buffalo Bills and San Francisco 49ers before returning to the Panthers in 2022 but he was never able to regain that star-like form. He was simply done as a superstar after Super Bowl 50. Wes Welker. Welker had the misfortunes of not just losing not one, not two, but three Super Bowl games as a player. For good, uh, I guess bad measures, he also lost a fourth as the wide receivers coach for the San Francisco 49ers in the 2019 season. But of course, Welker's elite play with the New England Patriots continued after the club lost Super Bowl 42 and 46 in the 2007 and 2011 seasons to the New York Giants, respectively. But once Welker lost his third Super Bowl, it was game over as a player. Welker was suspended for the first two games of 2014 after violating the league's PEDs policy. He was hardly productive after returning, however, finishing the season with just 49 receptions for 464 yards and two touchdowns. Welker joined the St. Louis Rams in 2015 and suited up for eight games. He hauled in just 13 catches for 102 yards in what turned out to be the final season of his career. Neil O'Donnell O'Donnell was the Steelers' primary starting quarterback from 1991 to 95. The one-time pro bowler turned in a career year for Pittsburgh in 1995, completing 59.1% of pass attempts for 2,970 yards and 17 touchdowns against seven interceptions. O'Donnell's efforts helped the Steelers to a Super Bowl 30 appearance where they met the dynastic Cowboys. O'Donnell chose a pretty bad time to implode, however, throwing three interceptions while taking four sacks in a 27-17 loss, which saw Dallas crown themselves as a dynasty. O'Donnell would sign with the New York Jets in 1996 free agency, but lasted just two seasons there. Subsequent stops with the Cincinnati Bengals and New York Jets did nothing to revive O'Donnell's career as a starting quarterback. O'Donnell never started another playoff game after the Super Bowl 30 loss, nor did he even come close to matching the stats of his career 1995 campaign. Jamal Anderson The 98 Falcons were one of the greatest surprises the NFL had ever seen at the time. Anderson, quarterback Chris Chandler, and defensive backs Eugene Robinson and Ray Buchanan played at all world levels to help the Falcons finish with a 14-2 record. Anderson was the heart and soul of the Dirty Birds Falcon squad, rushing for 1,846 yards and 14 touchdowns, earning the lone Pro Bowl and first team All-Pro nods of his career. But unfortunately, the Falcons were just no match for John Elway in the powerhouse Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 33. Unfortunately, Anderson played two games in 1999 before suffering a season-ending ACL tear. He bounced back in 2000 with another 1K rushing season, but another knee injury cut his 2021 campaign short. That second knee injury ultimately forced Anderson into retirement. Such a shame. Aldon Smith The 2012 San Francisco 49ers squad featured nine pro bowlers, including the dynamic Smith pass rushing duo. Aldon had a career year in his sophomore 2012 season, racking up 19.5 sacks and three forced fumbles. Smith earned what would be the only Pro Bowl and First Team All-Pro honors in a once-promising career. The 49ers reached Super Bowl 47, but they fell to Ray Lewis in the Cinderella Baltimore Ravens in the big game. Smith was only 23 years of age when his 49ers suffered that heartbreaking defeat, but as it turned out, he had already hit his NFL peak. Smith would miss five games in 2013, but manage a respectable sack total of 8.5. Suspensions and off-the-field troubles, however, limited him to seven games in 2014, and the 49ers opted to release him ahead of the 2015 season following a DUI arrest. Smith went on to sign with the Oakland Raiders, where he tallied 3.5 sacks over nine games. Smith was ineligible to play over each of the next four seasons because of more suspensions and off-the-field troubles. After five whole years away from football, he joined the Dallas Cowboys in 2020 with the hope of resurrecting his career. Smith had five sacks in 16 games, but never wound up playing football again after the 2020 season. Rich Gannon after meh runs with the Minnesota Vikings, Washington, and the Kansas City Chiefs, Gannon landed with the Oakland Raiders in 1999. John Gruden managed to turn the journeyman into a superstar. 
with Gannon earning Pro Bowl nods in each of his three years under coach Chucky. After Gruden was traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2002, Gannon turned in a career year under new head coach Bill Callahan. Gannon threw for a league leading 4,689 yards and 26 touchdowns against 10 interceptions en route to league MVP honors. Gannon and the Raiders went on to advance to Super Bowl 37, where they went up against none other than Gruden and the Bucks. Fittingly, Gruden, the man who made Gannon a star, also wound up being the man that destroyed Gannon. Gannon's Raiders posed no match for the Buccaneers. He threw five interceptions, three of which were returned for touchdowns and a 48-21 blowout loss. Unfortunately, injuries limited Gannon to just 10 total game appearances over the next two years. This included a serious neck injury that forced Gannon into retirement after the 2004 season. Todd Gurley Gurley was arguably the NFL's most potent and explosive non-QB offensive player not named Antonio Brown from 2015 to 2018. In that span, he earned three Pro Bowl nods and twice led the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Gurley was named 2015 Offensive Rookie of the Year. Two years later, he won Offensive Player of the Year honors after racking up 2,093 yards of offense and 19 total touchdowns, leading the Los Angeles Rams to a surprise NFC West Division title. In 2018, Gurley had 1,251 rushing yards and a league-leading 17 rushing touchdowns. He helped the Rams to a Super Bowl 53 appearance, but their high-powered offense was unfortunately shut down by the dynastic Patriots in a frustrating 13-3 loss. The Rams tried keeping quiet about it, but Gurley was obviously nursing a knee injury during the postseason and clearly was not at 100%. The club tried to cut back on Gurley's workload in 2019, but he visibly lost some power and was just no longer the game-wrecking workhorse. The Falcons decided to give Gurley one last shot in 2020, but it was all too obvious once again that he was completely done. Gurley averaged a woeful 3.5 yards per carry and finished with 678 rushing yards and 9 touchdowns. In 2022, Gurley confirmed reports that he was retired from football altogether. But what other NFL stars fell off after losing the Super Bowl? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.